your own TV. I'm so glad Mr. Hitchens gave that answer. You see, this is where it ends, isn't it? You start off being the liberal mouthpiece of one of the most reactionary governments this country has ever seen on the subject of war. You say you have got your own liberal reasons for doing so, and you end up on apologist and a mouthpiece for those miserable malevolent incompetents who could not even pick up the bodies of their own citizens and New Orleans in the aftermath of a hurricane. That's where it ends, Hitchens. That's where it ends. You end up a mouthpiece and an apologist for the Bush family, who's matriarch. You want to talk about racism? What about Barbara Bush? What about Barbara Bush, who took a look at the poor, huddled masses in the Astrodome, and told us they never had it so good? Who told us they were better off than they had ever been, underprivileged people, now in an Astrodome, the only problem, with whom, she said, was that so many of them wanted to stay in Texas. You know, Hitchens, you're a court jester. You're a court jester, not at Camelot, like other ridiculous former liberals before you, but at the court of the Bourbon Bushes. Barbara Bush, the Marion Toynette of modern-day American politics. Well, I think I have to say a quick word, if I may. This is all good knockabout stuff, I must say. Mrs. Bush Sr. does remind me of, I think it was Lady Diana Cooper who was once stopped outside Claridge's Hotel in London as she was waiting under the umbrella for the car, to be brought around after a ball. A ragged man approached her and said, Ma'am, I haven't eaten for three days. She said, You're very foolish then, you must try, if necessary. You must force yourself, if necessary. It's called a tumbrel remark in some circles. I don't know where the Murray and Toinette cake shop was in the Astrodome. But if you notice, I didn't say that I defended the president's record on this. I have written critically about for all of you to read already in Slate magazine. What I would not have said what I will not have said is that we should go to a refugee woman in Biloxi and say to her, do you realize the Arabs have stolen the money that should have come you too? We have no right to pit the poor against each other in that way and to betray our internationalism. And we have no right whatever to insult the tremendous performance of the United States armed forces once they are put into action. I will add one more thing. The 82nd Airborne and 1st Air Cavalry so far from being distracted by Iraq, have learned in Iraq matters of civil reconstruction, water distribution, purification, that have been extremely useful to them in New Orleans. The case the case, don't. I would advise you not to jeer at these men and women, while you're being televised, ladies and gentlemen. I would advise you not to do it, 